maybe even 20, 30 years ago, coffee was just a product, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's an export crop, gets roasted, gets sold, gets consumed and so forth. But now it's a lifestyle product. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Ford Friends. I'm your host, Lee Yisafar, and this is episode five of a five-part series where we are talking about selling more green coffee for better prices. And after the arc of the conversation over the past four episodes, we are finally arriving at what the challenges are for pricing good coffee at better prices. And, and this is something that I think a lot of us struggle to understand because it seems quite logical that if you're making a better product, you should be getting a price, a better price. What is the challenge with all of that, Sarah? Why isn't it that straightforward? There are many, uh, there are many angles to look at it. Uh, let's start from what you said. Mm -hmm. uh, a better product deserves um, a better price. Mm -hmm. um, true. The, but, but the reality is that uh, it's not just about product, right? Um, and what do I mean by that? Maybe even 20, 30 years ago, coffee was just a product, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's an export crop, gets roasted, gets sold, gets consumed, and so forth. But now it's a lifestyle product. Folks, our first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, is now available for you to learn at your own pace for just 50 euros, and it comes with a certificate upon completion. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for more details. Support this podcast by supporting our sponsors. So it's different, right? Um, it's it's it, it used to be traded the same way that we trade maybe wheat or rice, but mm. it's no longer the case. And you, all you have to do is walk into a cafe now and you know, it's not just a product. It's a mm. lifestyle choice. Mm. So when it comes to that, at least from the perspective of folks at origin, um, uh, uh, exporters and so forth, the challenge is understanding that we are no longer just selling a green bean. We're selling an idea, a lifestyle, a something else and i think that mind shift um has is 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 not easy for a lot of folks um to absorb and it's not just the coffee it's the service too right you can have mm -hmm. an excellent coffee but then if um, engaging with you at origin is difficult uh, or there is a language barrier there is misunderstanding communications mm -hmm. and so forth or coffee keeps arriving late and so forth that's also a reason why it's not easy and sometimes you know um you need to sell beyond the um intrinsic value of the product like, I mean, a stupid example is a pair of Nikes. How much does it really cost to produce versus right. how much they get priced, right? So what are you what are you paying for? You're you're not paying for the product. You're paying for everything else. It's the marketing. It it's the, it's the marketing. marketing. And there's nobody worse at marketing than green coffee exporters. Uh, I mean, things are better, <laughs> much better. Uh, but we're it also seems telling like Panama people, has figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, also, also we were misleading. Um, I think as an industry, we were misleading because we always say you need to do storytelling. Mm. Storytelling sounds like hi, you know, and then you hear the cooperative say we are a cooperative of two hundred farmers and we grow coffee in half That's an hour. That's not the story and that anyone cares about. <laughs> no, it's not a story, and it's not really the story that it sells. No. Is how you build your brand around it. Mm -hmm. The most successful green coffee um, exporters are tend to be single estates or um, local exporters that have a strong understanding of what marketing is, um, how to relate to roasters, how to make mm -hmm. coffee appealing. Panama. Even by sound, yeah. And, you know, like sometimes, you know, product offering when you go at the exporter level, is always the same. Mount mm -hmm. Elgon, double Kenya double A, washed and natural, and it makes no difference. So sometimes I'm like, maybe just changing the name of your products and leave the technical specs as a description and call it something else. Yeah, call it more it's fun, intimidating. You know? Right? Yeah. And they don't, it's like, oh no, that's just double A. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want, then just create some fuzz around it. We all do it. So uh, do it yourself. So that's why sometimes it's difficult because 
on the on aside on the product you need to look at the services and your level of service and then you need to look at your um uh, how you present your product offering and then the branding that you create around your company and that is the biggest struggle because going back to what we were saying before most uh, locally owned cooperatives or exporters already are understaffed um they already have limited uh, opportunities for investment so to get a marketing guy on board it's just not in it not. right and then you're and the commercial manager is like wait i already got to do the financing the price fixing the client management now you want to come you want to tell me to come up with some stupid names to sell my coffee forget it right they can't do it so it's 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 a little bit of 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 that so that is one angle, right? A mm-hmm. better product should give you a better price. Not necessarily. There's different um, aspects to me that are related to services and 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 marketing and branding and 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 creating something beyond of a product. So that's the 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 outward facing. Now let's look inward. Um, Sometimes it's not about a better price. Sometimes it's about a better cost structure, which mm-hmm. I always say is, you know, sometimes you just can't raise your prices mm-hmm. and it happens in every business. So how can you make your organization more lean and more financially savvy? So then we go back to the four pillars of the capacity building. How do you do your, how do you buy your coffee, parchment, cherries? How do you how do you manage your clients and your sales? How do you do your price fixing? Can you do um, open price contracts? Can you do fixed price contracts? Do you have fair trade contracts? Can you hedge? Can you buy your can you buy options? Can you hedge your risk? Um, and then do you have cash at hand um, in your financing and your cost structures and your cash flow? Is it healthy? When you when all of when you do these things well internally, then you make your organization more competitive, more lean, and that allows you to keep your prices, uh, not raise your price, or even you know make your price more competitive, and beat the guy next door because there will be another mill down the road, there will be another washing station down the road. So sometimes it is what it is. You know, an indicator that. A lot of, um, uh, I've noticed that a lot of the students that we work with don't have is their operational utility. So like, how much do you make per pound sold, right? I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't care about the FOB price. Every time you sell a pound of green coffee, how much money can you put in your pocket as an organization, as pure profit, your utility? They don't know it. I mean, that doesn't like, surprise what? me at all. Yeah, right. Look, the, 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 most people, I mean, small the businesses. Of, yeah, you know. the number of cafes that I ask, like, what's your net profit? What's your gross profit? They're like, what? Okay, can yeah, you show me your that? profit and loss statement? What? Yeah. They don't. And that, and that, and that, and I was like, look, um, I know it's tough, and I know yeah. that as a as a small business, and I get maybe it. right. Yeah, it's not your top priority. Yeah, you don't 100%. wake up in the middle of the night like, what's my, you know, what's yeah. my net? You know? <laughs> like, you probably have other things that. They're more important, but knowing this allows you to make better decisions. Yeah, in terms of it's empowering. Any, yeah, it's empowering because then you can make a decision like, okay, all right, so this roaster is offering me a differential of 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 uh, you know of 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 twenty two. I was hoping for twenty three, but can I take a 23, 20, 22 cents differential? Can I afford it? Mm. Yes, you can. So go for it. Um, that's better than say no below 23 i cannot otherwise i'm broke maybe you're not broke right um again goes back to what is your ideal sale price at the end of the season right then some contracts will give you a little bit more some contracts will give you a little bit less but it's 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 the journey you know it's it's not the individual don't get stuck on a contract just get stuck on getting that average sale price um so when you do these when you have a better hold of your numbers um, you don't always have to put the pressure on increasing prices on the other end, which you do, obviously. But sometimes you just can't. You can't yeah. raise prices every year. And that applies to all businesses. 
nobody does that. So how can you keep surviving? And 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 I think that that's becoming more lean and efficient. Um, in and having a better grasp of your numbers is 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 important. Why do you think we're in an industry where people think that it's okay not to understand the financial health of their own business? That happens across the entire supply chain. Why do you think that's the case? Well, uh, that's a that's a that's a good question. I think it's just people 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 are not driven by numbers. They're driven by other things. Um, they're driven by understanding if uh, the brand is on point, if if they have a following, if they have, um, if they feel that they um, they they reach their gross profit. Maybe they have investors to uh, to be accountable to. So mm. that's why uh, most of the time this is overlooked. But I think it's honestly when it's mom and pop's business or brick and mortar, I don't know how else you can say it, but mm -hmm. um, as long as you can pay your bills and you have a feeling that things are okay, then people don't um, really go too much deep. And sometimes you just can't get to it, right? There's right. so many things when launching a business that that is not the most important one, um, uh, one indicator. It should be, but mm -hmm. it's, it's often not. Um, and yet here we are, you know, buying and selling coffee. <laughs> so somehow, somehow our industry has still, survived. <laughs> the boat's still going, the boat's still sailing, um, but that's what it is. And to me, those are the things that to focus on. I always tell folks, don't focus on volatility. Don't try to chase the sea. Don't try to crack that no. nut because nobody Stay can crack it. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. lane. And, 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 and fix what you can. And then when it comes to volatility, when it comes to hedging, when it comes to using these tools, use it strictly when needed, use it with care. Um, mm -hmm. and, 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 but make sure that your what we call physical strategies instead of financial strategy, the physical is collection sales and price fixing and financing. So fix on your physical strategies, do that well. And when you feel like you hit the wall and you just can't grow or you can't be more competitive or you're still taking too much risk, then start looking at futures and options. A lot of times people say, oh, you're having problems. You got a hedge. Um, but if you can't do your physical strategies well, it's like, you know, you can't get on a motorbike if you can't ride a bike kind of thing, right? <laughs> so learn the basics and move on. Um, and I think that's the challenge that we're kind of telling folks, you got to hedge, you got to hedge, you got to hedge. When in reality, it's- They don't know what the C market is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's just, just focus on your physical strategies. Try to yeah. do well as, as well as possible. There's a lot of organizations that don't hedge and are thriving. So it's not all- um, up to the, 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 the financial tools to, um, to save the day, but definitely that's inward, um, uh, looking out, um, uh, because we are no longer a commodity sector, we are a lifestyle industry, mm -hmm. then start treating coffee as a lifestyle product or mm -hmm. choice, even better. It's not a product, it's a lifestyle choice. So then gear your product offering, gear your services, gear your branding towards that. And then people will gravitate to you. Um, nobody wants to buy uh, in a way, uh, it's going to sound bad, but nobody wants to buy poverty anymore. No. I say that to producers. Like if you try to appeal to humanity, if you try to appeal to like, we're poor and disadvantaged, please help us. No. Chances are, you're not going to get your clients. Or if you do, you're going to get a couple of clients that are really mission driven and that's it. Maybe they're going to be your clients for 25 years, but you're never going to move from two containers no. to 30 containers. So yeah. you got to make that shift and you're seeing it. We're seeing it. It's changing awesome. compared to 10 years ago. Before we wrap up, um, thank you for such an insightful series. This has been fantastic. Uh, I hope, folks, that you have gotten a lot out of it. Um, Sarah, if people want to connect with you or find out more about Vuna, where do they do that? 
So we have uh, our website, uh, vunaoriginconsulting.com, or you can also check us out on, um, on Instagram where we are Vuna Origin and also on LinkedIn, uh, Vuna Origin Consulting. So uh, we check all these channels. So that's probably the right. best way to get in touch with us. We will include links in the show notes, folks. Uh, make sure that you reach out to Sarah and connect with Vuna Origin Consulting. Um, thanks for everything that you're doing for the industry. It sounds incredibly empowering. Super proud to know you. So thank you again. <laughs> Would you Likewise. do me the thank you? Would you do me the great honor of signing off this episode for us? Yeah. All right. Here we go. So it's peace, love, and peanut butter. Peace, love, and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day, everyone. Bye. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.